Hi, History Makers. I'm Sherry Payne. And I'm Frida Payne. Well, let me start off first. Um, I was a member first of a group called the Glass House in Detroit with Invictus Records. Holland Dozier Holland Records had formed it when they left uh, Motown. And uh, after that, I joined the Supremes in 1973 at the behest of Mary Wilson. Thank you, the wonderful Mary Wilson. And um, it was a great time traveling all over the world, seeing sights mm -hmm. I'd never been able to see before, being a little girl growing up in Detroit. And there were so many idols in my life. I can't even name just one person. I mean, there was Billie Holiday. I love Billie Holiday. And uh, Gloria Lynn, I used to put their albums on in, in our recreation room and, and I would take a microphone and put on the three color pole lamp and start singing. I became Billie Holiday or Gloria Lynn for those three or four minutes until my mother shouted down, turn that music down. But anyway, um, so Billie Holiday, Gloria Lynn, Nat King Cole, I loved him, but my all time favorite singer was and still is Marvin Gaye. I love Marvin Gaye. I think he was before his time. He was a prophet, really. And mm -hmm. his, it just touched my soul. And besides Marvin Gaye, someone who is no longer with us as well, a fantastic singer like, like Marvin Gaye, he could sing the phone book or the encyclopedia and make you shout. That was the late, great Ollie Woodson former member of The Temptations. I loved Ollie. Oh man, you talk about soulful. But um, those, were, I think, were the two biggest influences in my life and in my singing career. And and um, sometimes I remember one time I was singing in the studio with Ollie recording and it was time for me to sing. And they said, Sherry, come on. I said, I was looking at Ollie. I felt like I had bought a ticket. He was so fantastic. I couldn't even say. He just mesmerized me. But um, so those people, Ollie Woodson, Marvin Gaye, Gloria Lynn, Billie Holiday. Oh, man. Touched my soul. Hi. Hi, History Makers. I am so proud to be included in your archives. And my name is Frida Payne. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I was born and reared there. I'm a singer and an actress. And um, most people know me as a, basically around, around the world, they know me for a hit record I had back in the early 70s. As a matter of fact, it was uh, 1970. And then I had a, a second one that was called Bring the Boys Home, was, was, uh, which was critically acclaimed because it had a conflict. It was an anti-war song. And this was in 1971. We were still at war with Vietnam and Richard Nixon was in office. So, you know, it was a, the Republican party. Um, I have had many influences in my career and my, in my um, uh, likes and dislikes. I'll say more likes than dislikes. But uh, when I was 12 years old, I, I really admired uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and I sort of almost tried to fashion myself behind her in terms of her singing, her technique. I also loved Lena Horne. I love Lena. Lena was my role model for being sexy and and for wearing very nice uh, gowns, couture gowns. And then there was Diane Carroll. I admired her as well because she was such a lady. And and I tried it. I remember she wore a lot of umpire gowns, and I tried it. Tried to uh, emulate that as well. Um, and then there was uh, Eartha Kitt. I loved Eartha Kitt. And then there was um, Gloria Lynn. Gloria Lynn was a woman that had she she was really big back in the in the uh, '60s. And she had some songs that I would, my sister and I both, we used to listen to her sing a song called Love I Found You and I Wish You Love and things like that. And then of course, at the age of 13, um, we bought, uh, I don't know who bought that album, but it was called Lady in Satin and it was mm -hmm. the great Billie Holiday. Yes. And yes. we listened to um, that out. We used to listen to that a lot because it was a, a really classy album of Billy's. And it, was with, it wasn't with it was just with uh, 
the rhythm, you know, uh, the rhythm or with just a, a small band. It was with strings and it was just very lush and mm -hmm. plush. And we just mm -hmm. love that one as well. Mm -hmm. So, and also I love Judy Garland. And Edie Gourmet, mm -hmm. you know, there's some white girls in there too. <laughs> and uh, of course there was Sinatra and Frank Sinatra, uh, Nat King Cole, and uh, let's see, who else? Oh, of British course. singer. Okay, um, then there was, of course, when Marvin Gaye came along with Ain't That Peculiar, I would, became an instant fan. <laughs> and uh, I love Marvin Gaye and uh, of course, Aretha. Oh, yeah. Aretha and I were, we were like, we weren't really friends, but we're both the same age. And we had a mutual friend. His name was Donald Meadows. And he mm -hmm. would tell me what Aretha's doing. And she would tell um, <clears throat> Aretha what I was doing because I started to enter talent contests when I was 13 in Detroit. And I was singing on the radio and I won a TV contests. And I got to be a little popular back then. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. I all have to say. I've also gotten to acting and uh, not so much. I was singing was always my forte. Mm -hmm. And also I studied ballet and Sherry did I too. Did we too, went yes. to the same ballet class, <laughs> the same <laughs> ballet teacher. Uh, and that was uh, Nicholas Suklas, and it yes. was Russian ballet. We yes. did that for two years. Yes, sure did. And then I continued to to uh, study dancing in high school. There was a we had a course for modern dancing, and I took that course. And then I had some little bit of Afro Cuban as well. So that's what happened with me. It's, I mean, my life still. I'm a singer. I'm still singing, <laughs> and I'm still. I still get an acting role every now and then. Uh, Life is good, yes. and uh, as we age, we have to deal with all the maladies that come yes, with aging. Yes. But, honey, just keep your faith keep, and right. your belief in the good old Lord, and uh, he'll take care of you. But you, have, but you have to take care of yourself. That's right. And I'm still singing, along with the, la the last Supreme Suse Green and my dear friend Joyce Vincent, formerly of Tony Orlando and Don. And I've been, I've been writing plays, screenplays and stage plays. My dear friend Donald Welch has put on two of my plays, A Lady in Waiting, and It Always Rains on Sunday. So thank you, Donald. And um, we were getting ready to put on 10 Good Years in Hollywood. That's when the pandemic hit, but so we will be doing it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that, but I love writing stage play and screen plays. Yeah, but and I've also done uh, some of Donald's plays. One was um, Change, uh, change, change is gonna come. Is gonna come right. Yeah. Written and directed and produced by Donald Welch. Mm -hmm. And also I did another one that was called The Divorce. And these were straight plays, no singing. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the Divorce. That's out on uh, uh, DVD now, video. Mm -hmm. And so I've done a couple of other things with him, more musical type things. Mm -hmm. And he's a very good, very, he's become a very close friend. Uh, of both of us. Yes, 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 dear friend. So thank you, History Makers. Oh, and I also have a, my latest project is my latest EP oh, right, recording. Yeah. I've done about 25 uh, albums, all CDs all together during my career. And uh, it's called Let There Be Love. And it's a duet with Johnny Mathis, uh, Dee Dee Bridgewater, a duet with Kenny Lattimore, and a duet with a very fine jazz vocalist, male jazz vocalist, and his name is Kurt Elling. Yes. So check that out. Yeah. Let there be love. Let there be love. <laughs>